The linked list is an extremely important data structure in the field of computer science. It's a dynamic data structure and it has literally hundreds of uses. It could be used for undo functionality, a browser cache. It can be used in mathematics for polynomial addition. The operating system will use linked lists for prioritized job queues. In fact, a linked list can be used to implement other data structures like stacks, trees, queues and graphs. So any application of one of these is an application of a linked list. Here's a linked list. The data doesn't appear to be in any particular order. The order of these items is implied by a system of pointers. We have a pointer called start, which indicates the first item in the list. In this case, Abigail. Abigail has a next pointer, which points to Beatrix, the third item in the list. Beatrix's next pointer points to the first item in the list, Chloe. Chloe's next pointer points to the fourth item, David. And David, in turn, points to the fifth item, Edward. Finally, Edward points to the second item, Francis. Francis's pointer is set to zero, which means that Francis is the last item in the list. So how can we represent a linked list and move towards implementing one programmatically? Here's our system of pointers again, but this time we've got two array variables, one called data, which holds the data in the order in which it arrives, and another array variable, which holds the next pointers. We also have a variable to indicate the starting item and a variable to indicate the next free space in the data array. Next free becomes important later when we want to build a list. So let's consider an algorithm to traverse a linked list. In other words, to visit each item one after another by following the system of pointers. We have a variable called PTR. We begin by assigning the value of start to PTR, in this case 6. And then we have a while loop. So while PTR is not 0, well at the moment it's 6, we output the data item at position 6 in the data array, in this case Abigail. We then assign Abigail's next pointer to PTR, which means PTR is now 3. Back to the top of the loop, and we can output data item number 3, Beatrix. We assign Beatrix's next pointer to PTR, so PTR is now 1, back to the top of the loop, and we can output data item number 1. Chloe's next pointer is 4, which we assign to PTR, back to the top of the loop, and we output data item number 4, David. Same again, we assign David's pointer, 5, to PTR, back to the top of the loop, and output data item number 5, this time Edward. We're nearly there, we assign Edward's next pointer, in this case 2, to PTR, back to the top of the loop, and we output data item number 2. Now this time we're assigning a 0 to PTR, which means we can exit the loop. And the program finishes. Searching a linked list is very, very similar. The only difference this time is that we're testing each item as we visit it to see if it's the item we're looking for. If it is, we set a boolean to true and we can exit the loop. And the final thing worth mentioning is that a linked list can have more than one set of pointers. Our original list had a set of pointers which indicated the alphabetical order of the data. But we can have another set of pointers which indicates relative ages and another set of pointers to indicate their relative salaries. Clearly, a linked list is not just any old list.